What's going on guys? My name is Corey from designsbyifr.com and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to address some beginner's water cooling tips for you guys. And I actually got my fiance to browse the internet, to browse videos, go through comments, look at some videos and actually have a look and see if she could actually understand what the person was talking about. Now, a lot of words were used in the videos that beginners won't actually know what it means. A lot of comments were down below. Now, I've created a list of these commonly asked questions and I wanna go over them with you guys for any of you who are starting water cooling and I wanna bring it down to a level where everyone can relate and understand. So guys, if you like videos like this, water cooling guides, reviews, tutorials, and of course, DIY modding tutorials and custom PCs, then consider subscribing to the channel because we love this type of content and hopefully you guys will too. Now these questions are not in any particular order. I'm just reading them from the list as we have plotted them down, as we have found them in the comments. Now, number one, we have, how do you plan out your water loop? And is it important to plan where you're going to put your drain port? Now I get a lot of questions about this all of the time, how I plan out my water cooling loop. So a lot of people like to put their radiator just before their CPU and then to their GPU. To me, that doesn't matter at all because your loop is only going to reach a thermal load. It's not going to pass a certain temperature. So to me, the GPU and the CPU order do not matter. Now, I don't wanna to go too in depth with this part. I've gotta keep it nice and simple for you guys. Your loop will not vary in temperature more than one to two degrees throughout the whole loop. The water's circling too fast, all of the liquids being cooled by the radiator. It's just simply not something something that you really need to worry about. Now, as far as the drain port goes, what you wanna do is you wanna try and place this at a lower part of the system where there is a high body of fluid. And the best place for this would be at the bottom of your reservoir. So you have a free port at the bottom of your reservoir. You wanna try and save one of them for the valve fitting. Now, if you don't have that free port, you can purchase T fittings, which have a port going through to continue loop and also a free port, which you could put the valve on. I do this in many of my builds and it works like a charm. Question number two. I have seen some cheap fittings online. Do you think those will be okay for my loop? About fittings, the main thing that you have to think about is mixing metals within your system. This is something that you want to avoid. If the fittings are made from aluminum, definitely, definitely make sure your water blocks are made from aluminum. But then there is more factors which come into play, like the different grade of aluminum that it's made out of. So definitely try and stick to the same metals within your loop. If you have fittings, which you find online, usually the cheaper ones are made from aluminum as well because it is a cheaper material for them to create the fittings out of. So definitely stick with aluminum water blocks if you use aluminum fittings. One thing you also need to consider is the rubber O-rings within them. You need to make sure that these are a good quality O-ring, otherwise you're just gonna get leaks everywhere. So I definitely try and stick to the more known brands if that makes sense, because you know that they're known for their quality and obviously have had lots of testing done before on them. The next question is, what is the best tubing to use for a beginner? Plain and simply for a beginner, I definitely suggest buying an all-in-one kit if they don't wanna go an AIO cooled system. An all-in-one kit comes with the included pump, res, tubes, and fittings, which will be enough to simply cool your system. Now, if you wanna go more advanced, then that's where all the hard tubing comes into play, but we're doing this video for beginners, so I would suggest sticking with the soft tubing if you cannot get an all-in-one kit, because soft tubing, it's easier to obviously bend around. Just with the soft tubing, please don't keep it so long that there's so many sags and do not do it too tight so that there's kinks in the bend. That will restrict the water flow through the tube, and that's definitely something you don't want in the system. The next question is, how do you leak test your system and how long do you leak test them for? Personally, I do leak test my systems. I should let them run for longer. However, I don't have that kind of time with my builds. However, 
I would recommend at least leak testing for maybe 12 hours. And I don't like to leave my systems leak testing if I am not there or around the build in case something happens. So I definitely don't want to go to sleep while the system's still running because you know things could happen the leaks could happen and then it gets all over your components however your pc should not be powered on so remember that guys and just different things could happen if you are not aware of the situation so what i tend to do is leak test for 12 hours usually i'm awake for around then i might be outside but i'm always checking in on the system every couple of minutes i like to leave one of my ports open up the top of the reservoir it helps that air escape that's going around the system. You normally see bubbles in that for the first couple of hours throughout the system. They will slowly bleed out through the system and into the reservoir, which they will rise up and out of that free port. Another way of getting the air out of the system and letting it bleed is to either tip it side to side or play with the pump speeds and that will push the air out through the system and into the reservoir which will then dissipate into the air. The next question is how do you get your tube lengths to the correct size when you are cutting them? Okay, I cannot stress this enough guys. It is better to waste a tiny bit of tube length than the whole run. What I mean by this is when I do my tube bends, I like to leave a tiny bit extra on the bend. So if I'm making a 90 degree bend, I'll come out of say the CPU, for example, and then I'll make it go this way and join into the oh, reservoir, for example, all right? And the thing is, if you want that perfect 90 degree bend, you're better off leaving that extra bit of tube on the end and, and cutting that off bit by bit than accidentally coming short of the reservoir and wasting this much tube and having to start again. That's how I go about it, guys. Pretty easy. So both ends would have a bit extra and then I'd slowly cut them down bit by bit until they fit perfect. Once you get close enough to the actual size that you need and there's, you know, probably this much left, it's, it's really easy to measure how much tube you need to cut off because it is right next to the fitting and, you, and nothing else is blocking the way. Next question is how often should I flush my system and is it really that important? Personally, I like to flush my system probably once a year, the desk behind me. Um, other fluids are rated for three years use. So you would expect to get three years use out of them. However, over time, you gotta expect your fluid to actually gain conductivity back into it. It's constantly getting ions and everything from all of the different metals within the loop. So as time goes on, the fluid gains conductivity. Now, personally, I like to do one year. The fluids are rated for three years, so I would say three years, but it depends what brand you're getting in fluid and also depends what you are using. If you do use distilled water, guys, I definitely do like to flush that out at least once a year. Last question we have is, can you tell me the basic components I need to begin my water cooling loop? This question was actually found a lot in all of the comments. Um, a lot of the videos on YouTube seem to skip all of those basic, just the basic stuff that a beginner wouldn't know. I think they're like, they're assuming that their audience knows a bit, yet they call the video a beginner's guide. To start with, the main components that you need is your pump and your reservoir. The reservoir is used to feed the pump with the liquid so it doesn't run dry in the system. Usually you can get a reservoir pump combo where the pump is actually attached to the reservoir. A reservoir is just a big tube which is used to hold a body of fluid, obviously to stop the pump from drying. It's also really handy to have in the loop as well to make for an easy way to fill the loop and to drain the loop. Your radiators are used to dissipate the heat out of the liquid by pushing air through and collecting the heat from the fins, which then pushes it out into the atmosphere. So radiators are used for cooling the system. Your fittings are there to keep the tubes in place and watertight. Speaks for themselves, they plug into the water blocks and then your tube sticks in. There's rubber O-rings inside which make a watertight seal so it allows for a complete loop around the whole PC. The CPU and GPU water blocks are there to take the heat from the component, transfer it into the liquid using the fins which are milled into the water block and it transfers that around the liquid into the radiator which is then 
dissipated by the fans. That's the easiest way I can explain it, guys. I hope that is a lot easier than a lot of the other videos out there. Um, I hope I've answered the questions good enough for you guys to understand. I tried to keep it nice and basic, nice and simple. I know a lot of you guys already know this stuff as well, but our aim here is to try and educate those who are new to the scene and obviously help everyone else understand what water cooling is all about. Anyway, guys, that's enough from me. If you guys want more water cooling tips, please leave your comments down below. Let me know what questions you want answered in the next video. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to check out more videos on the channel. We've got lots of custom PCs, lots of water cooling tutorials, lots of reviews and videos like this. So consider subscribing if you enjoyed. Like the video, guys. Check out our website. Lots of stuff happening on there. We're actually getting a full update as well. So I'm very excited about that. Can't wait to show you guys. Um, yeah, it's like lots of work in the making, so it's very exciting. So definitely check that out, www.designsbyifr.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.